Hyundai Verna. It is a name that has been in the Indian market for quite some time now. And very recently, Hyundai has launched the fourth generation iteration of its C-segment saloon and here it is today with us. What are we doing with it? Well, we are trying to find out how the fourth generation model has evolved in comparison to its last generation and to let you folks know if you should consider buying one or not. So let's get going, design first. Look at the Verna and the first thing that comes to your mind is, well the design is certainly polarizing. You would either love it or hate it. There's no middle ground, I think so. What are your opinions on that? Let us know in the comments below. And if I talk of dimensions, well, they have grown up and it certainly has a more imposing road presence. After all, it has the longest wheelbase in the class and is also the widest in its segment. Furthermore, the added cuts and creases, they add to muscle, they add to the visual bulk and make the Verna look more imposing on the roads. And over to the front, you now get connected LED DRLs, which certainly I'm not a big fan of. The wide grille, it adds to the meat, it adds to the presence. I like that. And as you move towards the side, you're treated with 16-inch alloy wheels, which I think could have been a size larger. The silhouette, it looks very appealing, it looks very neat. Over to the rear, you again get a connected LED tail lamp setup and with a fastback like profile, it looks very sporty and aesthetically appealing. Overall, I like the design, not the LED DRLs though. Like the exterior, even the interior is thoroughly updated and it now feels more luxury car like, it feels more premium because Hyundai has certainly used soft touch materials on the top side of this dashboard and the door panels. Of course, when you move lower down the dashboard or the cabin, there are some hard plastics, but otherwise it's a very plush place to be in. Furthermore, the design, it looks more modern, it looks more premium. For example, this uncluttered pattern for the AC vent, it looks neat. I certainly like it. Furthermore, the Verna is loaded to the brim with features. There are a slew of segment first features as well. For example, it gets both heated and ventilated front seats. And this button over here, we can call it a magic button. Why? Because on the press of this button, you can toggle between audio controls and AC controls on this particular touch panel itself. As we're talking of touch panels, well, there's a 10.25 inch touchscreen display, comes coupled to Android Auto, wireless uh, Apple CarPlay, and along with that, it even gets an 8-speaker Bose sound system, which certainly has very phenomenal output. Now, talking of the other screen, it is again a 10.25 inch display, for your instrument cluster. Coming down to the steering wheel, it's a two-spoke design, uh, and I'm not a big fan of two-spoke designs. A three-spoke steering wheel with a flat bottom could have been a much sportier offering in this turbo trim, at least. And talking of turbo trim, you get a darker black interior shade for this particular variant, along with red accents all throughout the seats and the upholstery. Now this armrest, it is adjustable for slight but not for the height and you do get a sunroof as well. So features, you're covered on that. Talking of space, there's a lot of it on offer. After all, Verna gets the longest wheelbase in its class. And when you're traveling with four, the booth space will come in handy because it is also class leading. The rear bench on the Verna is impressive in a lot of ways. Well, you get a lot of under thigh support on offer over here and the leg room and knee room, no complaints whatsoever. The headroom is great as well and the seat height is now higher than the older car. The center armrest, it is set at the right position and you're also offered with a rear sunshade. And that being said, it is a fairly comfortable and a fairly plush place to be in. But if I have to nitpick Hyundai, where are the rare sunshades? In fact, this window, it doesn't go all the way down. Other than that, a very plush cabin. I have to admit that. 
example, now before I start speaking about how good is the new Gen 1 R2 drive and how the overall ride comfort, let me brief you with specifications first and I'll be a little quick on that. There are two engine options, 1.5 liter NA petrol, 1.5 liter turbo petrol. The NA petrol motor is carried over from the Hyundai Creta itself and it puts out 115 PS against 144 NM. Two transmission options is what it gets, a 6-speed manual and a CVT. Coming to the turbo petrol motor, it is the most powerful of the lot. Puts out 160 PS against 253 Nm of max torque. Again, you get two transmission options, a 6-speed manual and a 7-speed DCT. With the latter is what we are driving today. And the DCT is something that I have to say, it is very precise. It knows when it needs to upshift and when it needs to downshift. Furthermore, if you want to have a little more fun, you get a total of three driving modes, Eco, Normal and Sport. The normal remains my favorite of all. It is the perfect balance between economy and the sportiness. Whereas in sports, you get a full-blown 160 PS of peak power output with 253 Nm of max torque, helping the Verna do a not 200 kmph dash in just 8.1 seconds and let me tell you that mileage is not something that the Verna misses out on in our test conditions we are getting a cumulative of 13 kmpl which is not bad by any means now talking of suspension it is very pliant the Verna offers a very cushy ride it manages to glide over potholes bumps and even expansion joints and even at high speed, it remains planted. The steering wheel is also now more accurate and is more responsive than the unit that was offered on the model it replaces. Also, it now comes with pedal shifters which help you toggle between gears on this DCT and it is apparently a very nice touch considering that the Verna is actually now a tad bit more sporty to drive. Now there are a total of 17 features on offer for the level 2 A dash system and I think it's a neat touch in making the Verna more safer a car now. And on the whole, this system works more accurately and precisely in the dark conditions unlike the one offered on the Honda City. And on the whole, Verna is now a much comfier and a much sportier car to drive. Can you live with it every day? For sure you can. In the Indian market, the Verna rivals the likes of the Honda City, Volkswagen Virtus, Skoda Slavia and of course the Maruti Suzuki Sias. But the Sias, let's keep the one out of this list. It is the oldest one over here. And I have to say that the Verna scores big marks when we compare the feature list. There's no competition whatsoever. In terms of powertrain, it certainly has the most powerful engine of all. The gearbox, it's a very well sorted 7-speed DCT on this particular variant. And if you want the 1.5-liter NA petrol motor, it comes with the IVD, which is a sorted affair too. In terms of overall ride comfort, the Verna scores high marks and the dynamics, they are much sorted than the car it replaces. And on the whole, I certainly like the Verna as a full-blown package. What do you guys think of it? Let us know in the comments below. And I, Mohit Bhagwa, your host, will walk out of this frame saying that I am now growing as a fan of this particular car. What are your opinions on it? I'll be waiting to read them in the comments below. So now, take care.